Hi guys, it's me, Team Gamer, and I'm back after doing a bunch of, uh, living, I guess. And I, uh, wasn't really planning on returning like this, but I saw a video recently that caught my attention and started a discussion. Some of you may know that I'm a My Hero Academia fan, but I genuinely like the series for its art, story, and characters. Because of this, I stumbled upon a video titled Bakugo Officially Sucks by a dude named Redrawn. For the most part, it's just someone explaining why they dislike a character in detail, but as I watched it more, I found out a lot of inconsistencies, contradictions, and general moments that don't make much sense. So I figured I'd be going through them in this video, trying to speak on various things about Bakugo as a character as well. At the end, I'm also going to respond to a comment on the video that I didn't get to type because he blocked me from commenting on his channel. Okay. Also, please do not send any hate to anyone mentioned in this video. Okay, let's go. For the love of God! Please! Oh, and he says this earlier in the video. I just want you to remember this for later. Just do it. For Bakugo, bro, his character development was literally out of nowhere. Just remember that for me. When he was a kid, he was praised by a crowd of people for having a powerful quirk. No normal kid after one praise suddenly thinks that they're the best. He says this as if he was only praised one time throughout his entire childhood. But it's clearly shown to us that he was showered with praise for his whole childhood, even leading into his young teenage life. People were always fawning over him whether he deserved it or not. It's probably why he ended up like this. Realistically, Deku should be holding a grudge up to this point in the story. Honestly? That's facts, bro! Bakugo would be getting the smackdown if that were me. Bro's getting hit with the three-piece combo, that's all I'm saying. People love to try and justify Bakugo's behavior towards Deku. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna let you finish, but you say this constantly throughout the entire video. It would help if you put some comments on the screen or something at some point to try and help illustrate your point. But even I've seen people who like Bakugo and they don't justify or condone his behavior. Hell, I'm one of those people myself. But there's a difference between justifying behavior and simply understanding it. In this next portion, he just explains how he doesn't like how the show makes Bakugo's bullying seem comedic and how he doesn't find it funny. Yo, also talks about how he's been bullied before and yeah I can understand why someone wouldn't like Bakugo if they've been bullied. I mean it makes sense. So let me just say this now, I'm not condoning bullying or Bakugo's actions and no one deserves to be bullied. But once again we're just trying to understand his character, not relate, justify, or sympathize with him. At least not on the bullying topic that is. If Bakugo is a hero rather than a villain, should act like it and show some sense of selflessness. Bro are you like aware of how character development works? You even say I believe that Horikoshi from the beginning of the series wanted to make Bakugo unforgivable and give him character development. Earlier in the video, this is still the beginning of the series, so you have to realize to some extent that his mindset is still warped in the thinking that he's the best. He simply wants to surpass and be like All Might. That's his whole goal for trying to enter UA. And of course he's not heroic yet, that's what he's literally going to school for. And talk shit, get your ass beaten, and still continue to talk shit. In that last clip, he was talking about how he thinks it's unbelievable that Bakugo can take so many L's and still be arrogant. That's called pride and ego. Sure, it's an overwhelming amount of it, but Bakugo is a fictional character. Obviously, some parts of his character are going to be played up for entertainment value. Or comedic value, which Horikoshi also demonstrates a lot. I'm going to be doing a realistic view into Bakugo's character in this video. Like it or not, but I'm going to be exposing the ever-living shit out of him. Alright, from this point on, we'll be going a little bit faster because he goes on for quite a while in this next part. Kitashima literally baits Bakugo into showing his true colors. Bakugo threatens to kill Kuragiri, and proving my point more, Kitashima says that's not very heroic. That line literally describes Bakugo's mindset in a nutshell. Yes, this is his character in a nutshell at the beginning of the series. If a character is going to change, they need to start off one way and then slowly shift away from who they once were in order to change. The fandom say that season 2 was the start of his character development, and I'll say it again, Bakugo doesn't change and just remains the same for the entirety of the show. Hey, do you guys remember what I said to remember not even 3 minutes ago? His character development was literally out of nowhere. Apart from telling a blatant lie, now it's hard to even understand what your stance is. Does he have no character development or does he? Or does he have character development, but you just don't like how it supposedly comes out of nowhere? I'm sorry, but Bakugo's a dick and even fans of him can't lie. It's really weird how the most egotistical character 
acknowledges an underdog like El Chaco. I just call that bad writing. Bro, how was this bad writing? He already acknowledged two other people in the previous season. Just come out of nowhere, nor is it bad writing whatsoever. Nothing new is being stated that hasn't already been touched upon. And Bakugo shouldn't have won any of the fights he won. Only reason he won those fights are because he's now one of the main characters, and being a main character, you're granted plot armor. This next segment of the video is genuinely so badly researched that, you know what, I have an idea. Lightning round! Let's see how fast I can explain how Bakugo won these logically. Let's go! The show says that Bakugo won because Kitashima couldn't stay in his armor state for long, which, again, plot armor. Now let's see how he actually won using information that the show gives us. You've been straining to keep your body rock hard this whole fight, right? But that means you're overusing your quirk! Sooner or later, you'll fall apart! Bakugo didn't win here because of plot armor. He won because he was analyzing Kirishima as the fight was going on. He realized that Kirishima was going on the offense because if he tried to defend for too long, then his body would break fast. Therefore, Bakugo decided to make Kirishima go on the defensive so that the match would be over sooner by bombarding him with constant attack. Debunked. Next fight. Bakugo should have lost that fight. Didn't matter that he blinded him. Tokoyami has shown to outsmart Yayorozu. Yayorozu is smart, but she lost to Tokoyami almost immediately because he didn't give her a chance to think or even attack. Bakugo is much more agile in combat experience than Yayorozu, meaning he can fight Tokoyami for longer, which in turn gives him a chance to find out Tokoyami's weaknesses. Therefore, he used this to eventually find Tokoyami's weakness and catch him off guard so that he could win the match. Next fight. It wasn't because he wanted a fair fight. It was because he wanted to beat and humiliate Todoroki in front of everyone. Bakugo was never shown to want to humiliate his opponents. He simply wants to be the indisputable best. Bakugo can't consider himself the best indisputably if he's fighting a person who's half-assing it. If Bakugo's goal here was to humiliate Todoroki, then he would have done so at the award ceremony and he would have accepted his win gladly. Okay, lightning round over. I'm almost out of initial D music. He's literally willing to die instead of working together with someone he hates. Vegeta begrudgingly works together with Goku, someone he despises, but the important thing is that he does it anyway. This is pissing me off. Can't believe I'm working with someone like you. Deku! We give him everything we've got at point blank range. Our only option is to inflict damage and then put some distance between us. Shoot now! This is our chance! If All Might said to Bakugo to stop being a bully and Bakugo continues anyway, not only would that prove my point on how he doesn't change as a character, but it also means that Bakugo is a sadistic piece of shit. Dude, how does this mean any of that at all? Dude has been bullying Deku his entire life. He's also been mean and arrogant his entire life. He's not that willing of a person to just stop because All Might told him to once. People don't even change like this in real life. Bakugo's issue at this point in the story is that his ego and hatred gets in the way of his goals. This is something he has to move on from in his later development. And when he got captured by the League of Villains, Hodokoshi, this was your chance to make a trash character better. And when Bakugo refuses, I'll just call that bad writing because he acts like a villain instead of a hero. It is somewhat understandable to think this though. The villains even wanted to solely capture Bakugo because they thought he was villainous. And while the aim of this video isn't to praise Bakugo as a character, this revelation that Bakugo won't join the villains is actually a really good subversion tactic by Horikoshi. By blurring the line between his mean personality and his admiration of All Might, Horikoshi can then reasonably set up suspense for if Bakugo will decide to become a villain. That's good writing. You want to subvert your audience's expectations. When you look at Bakugo's motivation, up until this point, you'll see that his goal is really only to be the strongest and surpass All Might as a hero. But his personal issues are just way too elevated for that goal at this point in the story. And I'd argue that that makes Bakugo a really intriguing character, actually. In his fight with Deku, nothing changed between the two. Oh, for real? Deku didn't learn about how Bakugo was feeling this entire time? Nor did Bakugo learn that you need to save in order to win as well? Well, damn, I must have missed it then. The whole fight was literally Bakugo taking his anger and frustration out on Deku because Deku was his own little punching bag. Well, yeah, it may have started out this way, but it didn't continue throughout the entire fight. At one point, Deku literally says that this is perfect and a good way to test his shoot style out on Bakugo. And even after the fight, Bakugo proceeds to keep on bullying Deku, even when All Might told him to stop the second time. All Might literally never says that throughout this entire scene. Again, he mainly focuses on winning at everything. Y yeah, it's an aspect of his character that a lot of people in real life have too. It's called being competitive. 
In this next part, he talks about how Bakugo's apology at the end of the villain hunt arc comes out of nowhere because he quote unquote rejected everyone. I'm not even gonna explain much for this one. I'm just gonna put some manga panels on the screen that contradict what he's saying here. Feel free to stop the video if you wanna read these. When Satsuda asked Bakugo how he changed, and Bakugo said he didn't change, his goal is to beat All Might and become number one. Bro, he literally doesn't even say beat. His words are on screen. How did you miss <laughs> Why does he look like that? And how Bakugo wins his fights. Again, plot armor. Oh god, not this again. He just hits his opponents with a harder explosion. In season 5, his fight with Setsuna, he only won those fights because of his gadgets. Horikoshi is now telling us that the reason Bakugo believed Deku was because Bakugo was jealous and felt like Deku was a better hero. He literally doesn't even say this here, nor does he say the words better hero. No. Bakugo was a bully because he was being a bully. He jumped and assaulted Deku because he was being a bully. He told Deku to kill himself because he was being a bully. He tried to kill Deku because he was being a bully. And he was being I think I'm running out of reaction images at this point. You do realize that bullying is a behavior that can be explained most of the time, right? Most people don't just wake up and decide to torment people for no reason. Bakugo bullied Deku because he had an inferiority complex that he projected onto him through the form of bullying. He couldn't understand that Deku was just trying to be kind to him and he thought he was looking down on him because of this. Pile this on with the fact that Bakugo Bakugo's ego was also festering all throughout his childhood, and you have a narcissist who tries to prop himself up by putting others down. Now this doesn't excuse his actions, but to claim that Bakugo did what he did because he's just a bully is extremely disingenuous to his character as a whole. We never got any information on why he was a bully. Oh my god. And his sacrifice to save Deku wasn't even a sacrifice. It was just him getting in the way of things and him trying to do his job. Oh, so is this why he thought of all the progression he and Deku had immediately before trying to save him? Because he was trying to just quote unquote do his, his job. job? Like, what does that even mean? Dynamite. Do you get the irony of Bakugo just calling Deku an All Might fanboy when Bakugo himself literally fanboys All Might? Yeah, this actually is a pretty good point. But tell me, have you seen Deku's first hero outfit design? In this next bit, he talks about how Bakugo isn't actually concerned about Deku's well-being when he wants to go to his hospital room at the end of the war, or in that he just wants Deku alive so later on in the story, he could beat him. Which is still something that we see Bakugo wants to do. But as soon as we see him wake up, he's genuinely concerned about the well-being of his friends and mentors. This is the exact opposite of what selfishness is, man. He then talks about how Endeavor is actually putting in the work to change who he is and how Bakugo isn't somehow, even though All Might said that Bakugo is similar to Endeavor in the way that he's changing. In this next part, he delves into Bakugo's apology to Deku at the end of the villain hunt arc, but I'm not really going to go into this one too much. I've already covered most of the stuff he's saying. Bakugo and his apology just gave off excuses. No, he didn't. Like I said before, he's just explaining why he did the things he did. He's not trying to excuse his past actions here, nor is he trying to avoid saying sorry. Bakugo's apology was basically that he always thought Deku was a better hero than him. Once again, he literally never says the words better hero throughout this entire scene. He does say that he's had to acknowledge Deku's strengths and his weaknesses, but that's not even the same thing. When Class 1A fought Deku, Bakugo kept going back and forth with bullying Deku and calling him an All Might wannabe to trying to be considerate. Bakugo's name calling and attitude does not take away from his growth, motivations, or actual feelings like I stated earlier. Let me tell you why I say Bakugo was a bully, because he was being a bully. If you're gonna use the waterfall scene, I guess you can say you're looking into things too much. What? Looking into things too much? This is, quite literally, a key moment in his backstory that sets up his inferiority complex to the audience. We are shown the specific moment for a reason, man. It's a needed interaction to explain his characterization later on in the series. It's not looking too deep into things when it's blatantly there for the audience to understand. If Bakugo started bullying Deku from the beginning of the show, there's no justification. I didn't think there was any justifying his actions early on anyway, but whatever. And even after the apology, he still continues to bully Deku. He still continues to be loud and arrogant. There's a YouTube video titled Understanding Bakugo by a guy named Kidoroki, or Kidoroki, I'm not really sure how to say it. But in the latter half of the video, he comments on the notion of Bakugo reverting back to his old self even after his apology, which is exactly what this guy just commented on. Now, I'm not gonna show too many clips because it's a really well-made video that you should go watch for yourself if you haven't already, but he explains this in a much better way than I ever could've. 
Here, Tokoyami says, even after the grand apology, alas, nothing has changed. With Sugar Man following up by saying, try to be better, man. Then Bakugo cuts him off by splashing water in their face. It's almost as if Horikoshi is Bakugo and Tokoyami and Sugar Man are some of the fan base in this moment. After the splash of water, Bakugo then states that they are all his rivals in the aim to be number one. Thus, Horikoshi is showing us that Though his snappy personality through his comebacks still remains, Bakugo indeed has changed in many different ways. Thank you for that, Hiroki. Be sure to go check out his channel sometime. I personally think he posts some really cool stuff. It's where to a point where when Deku says Bakugo is going to help him defeat All for One. This is like the second time you've said something contradictory to what you're showing on screen. This man is literally choosing his pride over the sake of others. Yup, definitely choosing his pride over the sake of others. If you like Bakugo, good for you, but don't even try to bring some factual evidence on how he's actually a complex and compelling character. Okay, boss. Thank God it's finally over. I mean, for the most part at least. The last part of the video is just him comparing Bakugo to other fictional characters and to be honest, I don't really care that much. But to sum it up, basically it's fine to dislike Bakugo. Everyone has an opinion and I can respect that. But claiming that he hasn't progressed as a character or just ignoring parts of the story in the name of quote unquote criticism is just, like I said before, disingenuous to his character and blatantly untrue. And this video isn't meant to send hate to this dude. Although with all the inconsistencies and wrong claims, you'd think that someone in the comments would point out that... Oh wait, I haven't talked about that yet, have I? I've been in the hills, fucking dude. The comment section of the video is basically just an echo chamber of similar thoughts and opinions with some contrasting comments at the very bottom, but most of my comments fall under this guy's comment right here. If Bakugo was a real person, he'd be in prison for life, but because it's fictional, it's A plus okay. You know a lot of beloved characters wouldn't be the most normal or respectable people in real life, right? After a while of talking to this dude, the creator, Redrawn, interjects in the conversation and eventually bans me from talking to the other dude by blocking my comments and deleting them on his channel. And no, my comments weren't being deleted because YouTube thought they were disrespectful, they were being deleted because he was purposely deleting them and because he blocked me from commenting on this channel. I even tried testing this to see if I was correct by commenting, opening YouTube in a new incognito tab on Chrome, and then looking for my comment on the video. Turns out it wasn't there because I'm blocked from commenting on the channel. But aside from that fact, this next segment of the video is just going to be me addressing a comment that was made to me by RPG Fanatic that I didn't get to respond to because at that time I was already blocked from commenting on the channel. This first statement is a point in our discussion when I said that the moments shown from Bakugo's past are actually important in his characterization. He ignores this point here and acts like I said character moments have to be childhood ones. The snarky personality may be similar to how it was at the beginning of the series, but he has still grown and changed. He's not going to abandon all of who he was just because of that. There's still Bakugo tendencies in there like yelling or making insults. This next statement is a response to a comment that I made right before this one as well. In this statement, I was saying that Deku is the only one that we can see who helps Bakugo when he's a kid. He claims that this notion is some sort of hypothesis that I just made up, but you can literally see it whenever you read or watch the series. He also says that helping others doesn't mean you think that someone is weak in reference to Deku, but we weren't talking about how Deku thinks, we're talking about how Bakugo perceived it, and he perceived it as Deku looking down on him or thinking that he was weak. He kept saying that Bakugo's ego was unfounded, so in response to this I asked him if Deku's kindness was unfounded, or if Ida's rigidness was unfounded. In response to this he said that Deku had a kind mother and that Ida had a disciplined upbringing, so just as they have their reasons for being the way they are, Bakugo also has his. Bakugo was being praised so heavily as a child, to the point where everyone was always congratulating him, making him feel like he was the best and growing his ego. He also says that the sludge villain apprehending Bakugo could have made him rethink the way he's been acting and his strength. But this is literally the first situation he's ever been in like this. He's been stubborn and arrogant for like all his life. He's not going to start rethinking things as soon as one thing happens. And we do see him think about this and acknowledge it in the final exams arc with Deku and All Might. We're going to need to backtrack a little bit to understand this comment. Here he's saying that Bakugo would have to die in order to stop thinking arrogantly after the sludge villain attacked him. To which I disagreed because Bakugo literally does change his mindset later on in the manga. To which he says that it is true, meaning that he's saying that Bakugo hasn't changed. Or maybe he got confused about what I was talking about here? I'm not really sure. At this point it was hard to tell what he was responding to since we were like making three comments at a time towards each other. So I had to ask this. 
Which now leads us back to this angry comment that we started off with. I only asked for clarification since the influx of comments was getting confusing. I didn't think it would actually peeve him off this much. In this next part, he's responding to the fact that they said Bakugo is blindly optimistic, just like most kids are, because he believes that he can beat All Might at the beginning of the final exams arc. But I never said that this fictional fight between All Might, Deku, and Bakugo proves how most kids are blindly optimistic. I was just saying that it's understandable from a character standpoint that Bakugo believes that he'd be able to beat All Might at this point in the story, as he was very childish. And a lot of children are blindly optimistic to a point where they believe they can do things that are basically impossible. So I'm not saying that this very exact fight from this exact fictional series is setting the precedent for how most children are. It's just insane. In this next part, he talks about how Bakugo thinking that his body just moved on his own in parallel to Deku in season 1 isn't character growth, and that this is nothing but an instinctual act. We do see that Bakugo says that there were no thoughts before doing this, but the panel right beneath it is literally evidence to the contrary and tells us that this actually does mean something to him. He also says that I'm strawmanning in reference to this comment that I made where I used his logic against him. So tell me, if Bakugo's sacrifice here means nothing about his character at all, can the same be said for Deku for what he did in chapter 1? Deku was said to have moved on instinct too, so I guess this really doesn't mean much, huh? This isn't strawmanning, I'm trying to see how confident you are in your flawed argument, which I guess apparently isn't very confident since you deflected from it. This next example is him responding to me giving examples of Bakugo's character development in action. The hypocrisy part is in response to when I talked about Bakugo giving a kid some advice about how not to look down on others in order to notice his own weaknesses. This is genuine change. He never would have said this at the beginning of the series. He doesn't see his own flaws? Alright. At the end of the villain hunt arc when they're trying to get Deku back, he admits that Ida is faster than him and sends him to go reach for Deku, thus demonstrating that there is a flaw in his speed in comparison to someone else. And he admits this too. He then says that he doesn't have to like anyone to help his teammates in reference to the joint training arc, but I never said he liked anyone, that's not even what this is about. Bakugo does want to win and this competitiveness is a part of his personality, but earlier on in the series he hated the idea of working with others who he considered to be beneath him, even if it jeopardized his chance of winning. So this does show more irrefutable growth in his character too, whether you like it or not. Dude, I never said that he helped anyone directly. I said that he helped his classmates as a collective so they could put on a show for the school. He then tries mocking me by saying that it's quote unquote insane to look for character growth in a quote unquote filler arc. Uh, are you even aware of what filler is? The school festival arc happened in the manga. It's not filler. You can't really cope your way out of this one, man. He then asks how we know if Horikoshi is writing Bakugo's powers to be better than they were before. I, I mean, I'm just kind of shocked. I didn't think this would need explaining. If I had to take a guess, I'd assume it's because he literally goes to a hero school where he's training to be a better hero. And I'm aware that you say this as well, but being creative genuinely can improve your quirk. So can support items and quirk awakenings if you want to talk about being physically stronger. This next segment is a running theme in the discussion. <coughs> cough, cough. Where he fails to see how Bakugo's ego has started. I'm not going to talk for this one since I've literally explained this twice already. So I'll just leave my comments on screen in case you want to feel free to pause and read them or something. He then claims that Bakugo never supports people if it doesn't benefit him, and that Bakugo is coping by working with others in order to achieve his goals. If this is truly the case, then why did he save Natsuo in the Endeavor Agency arc? Why did he save all of these people in the first war arc? Why even save Deku when thinking of all the progression you've had with him beforehand? Why does he now risk his life if he didn't have to before? He didn't acknowledge saving as a form of winning earlier in the series. He had to learn that. Is that change nah it couldn't be that yeah clearly not no 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 let's just call it out for what it is you just couldn't explain your own flawed logic to me correctly so you deflected from the point but hey that's okay just move on right oh but wait aren't debaters supposed to win the debate by doing research and actually being knowledgeable in what they're talking about well anyway that's the video go subscribe to whoever you want i guess i don't really care uh you can think however you want on bakugo as a character but i just found a lot of contradicting stuff in this video all right, like. If anyone from Naruto is comparable to Bakugo, it's Sakura. Good God, man! What the hell?